Hello and welcome to another episode of the Master Mind, Body, and Spirit Show. I'm your host, Matt Belair. Today's guest first began his personal journey with the wellness and healing potentials of sound and specific frequencies while working with the nonprofit organization he had established, Homemade Genius, in 2004. Working with undeserved children using music as a tool for promoting creativity and connection, through those experiences, he began to really notice the improvement in overall attention, engagement, confidence, and even academic performance with the kids. He has 20 years experience in the creative arts fields and has worked with community powerhouse organizations such as United Way, Hospice, and Meals on Wheels to utilize the healing force of creativity in building community connection and enriching the lives of those he worked alongside. He is a multi-instrumentalist, poet, author, and intuitive healer who is a pioneer in truly exploring the power of sound and meditation paired with collective intention under the umbrella of his company, Listening to Smile. Welcome to the show, Ian Morris. Thanks for having me, man. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, me too, man. I'm glad you guys reached out. I got to take a look at your work, uh, all the incredible things that you were up to. Um, it took me a while to browse all of the music, all of the things, all of the history. Um, so why don't you give the audience a little bit of background about who you are, your story, which is really cool, and uh, what you're up to and what you're creating. Okay. So um, the first real step into this was when I got a hold of the book, um, The Healing Power of Sound by Mitchell Gaynor. And that was um, 2010. 2011 right in that you know mid mid in, uh, mid year I guess 2010 and um, when I started really diving into that book I was already a musician so I appreciated you know music in general and what it could do as far as mood and you know um, just release work I guess and so um, when I got into that book and started seeing the science behind um, music, it was something that, as you spoke of in the introduction, you know, with my nonprofit, I've watched how music influenced kids, you know, with their self esteem, helping them improve their grades, their um, just image, you know, from body image to their image of self. Um, and so I already knew that there was powerful qualities, you know, um, in music, but seeing the science when you got into binaural beats and brainwave states and, and getting into spontaneous healing, like um, some of the books like uh, uh, Greg Braden and Math, Heart Math Institute and, you know, the epigenetics with Bruce Lipton. All of these books were resonating with me. And so it just hit at that time, you know, it's the universe sending you that message and it just all clicked, you know, doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> and so it was um, really just an explosion from that point. I built a sound table um, to play frequency into my body and I started experimenting with my body with, with sound and frequency. And, you know, I th think the important thing that I would really like to put out there is that none of this equipment is going to hurt you. So everyone should start, you know, um, exploring what sound can do as far as vocal toning, uh, pure tones, binaural beats. There's so much out there that you can explore. And I believe that there's not a right way or the right frequency or the one frequency that's going to fix you. It's just like, you know, when you look at nutrition, you know, you have to have a well-balanced diet and have variety to be a healthy, you know, eater. And so frequency is the same thing. All of these things we're talking about from nutrition to thought to music to a, a sound wave, they're all, all vibration. And so I think that what I started seeing in my own personal journey was just that the more I explored, the more it opened up more doors and more, you know, rabbit holes and more gateways to step into a new self. And when I think the big frequency for me personally was 174 hertz and 528 hertz, those two, you know, kind of using those in conjunction um, with each other, um, one right after the other, was, was such a powerful tool that I started seeing a breaking up of my old self. Um, 174 hertz is utilized for pain. A lot of people use it for, um, you know, just kind of a relaxation tool, sleep, and a lot of people use it for pain to help, you know, um, 
relieve some of the the pain um, that goes on in the body. And 528, you know, is a big powerhouse frequency. They call it the frequency of love, the miracle frequency. There's some tests that have shown that it can um, help reconstruct damaged DNA in laboratory tests. Um, so it's a really powerful frequency. But for me, during that time, um, the 528 hertz just was an emptying out. I had a lot of pain and trauma, you know, that I experienced. And I think as a male in this society, you're taught to be tough, push it through, you know, walk it off, shake it off and keep going. And I did that so much, you know, my father had passed away my sister had passed away. I lost um, a friend, a really one of my best friends, you know, passed away in a car wreck. I had some friends that committed suicide all within this 10 year period. I lost about 15 people. And it was a really significant, you know, part in my life where I should have been grieving and, and should have been, you know, giving myself that self-care that's needed to um, move through those. But I was just shaking it off, pushing it through. And so during that time in 2010, I met this wall, you know, that just smacked me. And it was, you know, where I had the about two months of just the dark night of the soul that was just extremely hard to deal with. And I had to say, okay, God, you got my attention. You know, <laughs> uh, what am I supposed to do now? I lost everything. I, you know, um, was sick with a mystery illness that they didn't know how to diagnose. One doctor told me I had MS. The other doctor said he thought it was colon cancer. There, you know, it was just back and forth between all these different specialists, and I never got a solid answer for what was going on with me. And I was experiencing some pretty traumatic um, pain, you know, for almost a year and a half. And during this time, these books started being introduced, you know, and, it's, and it took me on this path where I started seeing real uh, benefits, you know, that were so undeniable that I said, wow, I, you know, I didn't realize that breath work was such a powerful tool. I didn't realize that meditation could actually help you rise above and ascend your pain. You know, um, I didn't know that sound just by putting on headphones could help me get rid of migraine headaches or could help me with some of my body pain. And so it's just like the nutrition coming back to that where I introduced breath work, meditation and sound healing through binaural beats and frequency. Um, and it was within a year, I was a pretty big guy. I was out, you know, out of shape and I was about 308 pounds. And so when I started listening to these frequencies and in six months, I had already dropped, it was over 50 pounds in six months. And by the end of that year and a half, I had lost 110 pounds and, um, moving forward with the mental, you know, I started seeing differences where I had grown up dyslexic um, and had tremendously hard times in school fitting the cookie cutter mold. And um, I started seeing breakthroughs where the frequency with the headphones was breaking up um, my old stories, my past stories of rejection and defeat and embarrassment and the different things I went through in school because I wasn't learning in the same ways. And it started disrupting that frequency that I was broadcasting to myself. And I was able to see as an observer and view things from a different perspective. And I started um, making new neuro pathways and creating new um, stories and telling myself, you know, I am declarative statements and speaking to myself in a different way. So it was able I was able to show not only myself, but family and friends were like, dude, what happened to you? Like, you're talking faster. You seem smarter. <laughs> like, you're talking about quantum physics and, you know, sacred geometry. What's that? And they started getting into, you know, a lot of different um, dialogues with me where they were saying, I just don't know. You seem like a whole new person. And that's pretty much what I tell people is that the old self died you know, during that dark night of the soul and this new person emerged with a new purpose and a new plan to use sound and frequency to not only help myself through what I was going through, but to find the other people that need that hope and that compassion and that love and to give them tools that they can use to, you know, better their life. Wow. That's a, oh man, that's a lot. Good, good for you, man. You went through the dark night. That is always, um, it's always a challenge and I've, I've heard it a few times and, and it seems to come uh, pretty often through crisis. And I think that um, 
the solution, whatever it is, is like found through personal exploration. And in your case, music, because I think that there's, um, um, Hmm. I'm hearing a little bit of clicking. Is that me or is that you? It could be me. Cause I got this new mic set up. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't trust it completely. I just want to make sure that I, I'm not getting feedback in this whole broadcast. I may as well nip it in the butt right now. Um, I'll yeah. just check, check Facebook. I think I'm okay now. Um, okay. But yeah, so you have this experience in music, um, which I've done a lot of research in music, um, sound, frequency, vibration, salvageo sequences. Um, I've had Eric Rankin on from Sonic Geometry, um, all kinds of things. So I guess the first thing that, I would, that I'd want to ask is, can you present some of the most compelling science like to you? I know there's so much, there's stuff that even go back to the Sumerian tablets, um, all these different things. So can you share some of the most compelling like research science and like how this actually works? Um, you know, I'll just share the quickest one for me, but as binaural beats, when I went to uh, the sync tuition head headquarters in, Sedo or in Estonia last year, they flew me out um, cause they had this new um, product on, on, you know, binaural beats and basically I learned I knew about binaural beats but really clicked in that they play two frequencies and in you know a different frequency in each ear and then what happens is your brain tries to figure that out so it creates a third frequency which is the binaural frequency and I'm very visual so they had like a visual um, animation of that and it's like oh like it really clicked in so then the brain is like getting entrainment you're hitting those frequencies in the same way that when you go into a deep meditative state so now we have this technology and this science that's that's helping us hit these brainwave states without having to do all the hard work that we used to have to do or the ways that we did it before technology so it seems like you're accessing that information so yeah. maybe you can talk a little bit about the compelling science and in which way you used it yeah, so what's interesting is I, I feel like personally there needs to be far more scientific studies that dive into um, everything from heart rate to, you know, brain activity to the different parts of the brain that are firing. Now, the meditation has been studied far more than sound has, you know, and sound is emerging onto the mainstream market you know more now more than ever you're seeing you know singing bowls and yoga studios and everyone's doing sound immersions and sound baths it's really starting to pick up so I'm hoping in the next few years that you'll start seeing doctors taking more seriously the healing power of sound and you'll see more clinical studies that can give you know far more scientific data than what sound healers that are you know working in the field right now you know that combination of doctor and sound healer working together I think could you know, um, be an amazing combination to help people. But what I'm seeing um, that I can speak of, you know, today would basically be testimonials, not, you know, from not only myself, but people that I'm working with, with my affiliate program, as well as, you know, some of the patrons who are coming to our, our sound, you know, healings and events. And, um, you know, the one that sticks out, you know, pretty powerful for me is um, I had a, one of my affiliates in Charleston, South Carolina, was working with a girl um, who was addicted to drugs, you know, and was having a pretty hard time. And she came to the group to the sound healing and had such a powerful experience. You know, she was crying and, and just having a lot of release. And she, you know, went to the affiliate, you know, that was um, facilitating. And she said, this music was so powerful. I've never heard anything like this. It, it really connected with me. So they put her in touch with me and we did a couple um, phone, you know, frequency sessions. I call them personal frequency coaching, where you're basically teaching people about sound and, um, and kind of the intentions that are behind, you know, the frequencies and how those frequencies match up with the chakras. And then you teach them a little bit about the chakras and what part those play in the body. And then you help them kind of guide them into moving into using sound on a daily basis, giving them some intention programming, some I am declarative statements, the things that they can use, you know, utilize during that time. And she had such a breakthrough that she came to about five groups total and did about five personal coaching sessions and just took off. Like she left drugs behind, never did drugs again. She became an entrepreneur and started her own business. And, you know, she's thriving um, right now running a day spa. And it's just tremendous watching the changes in people like that where I think it's a combination of things. I don't think someone's going to go to a sound bath and miraculously be 
you know, healed and, and everything's good. I think that it's a connection between the music and the frequency, the sound, the individual who in their mind has the intention, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And they use the frequency as fuel to kind of propel them into this new uh, gateway opening that they're going to step into. And, and I think that it takes the intention. I think intention is everything. I think frequency is such a powerful um, tool in disrupting the past stories and the broadcasts that we're giving ourselves, which what I find traditionally with most people that I'm working with is a pretty negative vibe. Even when we think we're positive, we have these subconscious voices that are, you know, throwing the wrench in, into things because we, you know, we say, I want to be abundant, but then we look at our bank account and we say, well, that's not really working out for me. Or, <laughs> you know, we want to be skinnier. We want to be more strong and more fit, but we're not working out, but we're telling ourselves that, you know, hey, I'm doing good. I did my 20 push-ups today. And, and instead of, you know, reaching those goals that we really want to reach and, and talking to ourselves in a positive manner, I think the music and the frequency disrupts those voices and quiets that noise in the mind. And once you have that intentional programming, you can use frequency for such a, a mood change, a um, brainwave state change, and you can get into even heart rates. And when you get in, when you start dealing with beats per minute, you know, with music, 85 beats per minute is a really big sweet spot for music because in a lot of the shamanic drumming, you'll see 75 to 85 beats per minute is where it's most effective. That's where you start seeing that heart brain coherence, that, you know, the connection between the heart and mind. And, you know, when you start looking at the, for me personally, I guess to answer your question, Heart Math Institute is the most powerful thing that I've seen compelling evidence scientifically where you start seeing that they're showing that the heart actually has its own neural network and is communicating with the brain far more than the brain is connect, communicating with the heart. And when you start seeing, like when people have transplant surgeries and they've never been a painter, they get a heart of a painter in that transplant and then they start painting these amazing paintings. I mean, it's hard to dismiss, you know, it's pretty undisputable where you're seeing each part of our body has an energetic field. Each part of our body has a memory and has its own process, you know, for us as an individual or like a walking universe, you know. So I think sound, everything is frequency and sound works with every single cell, every single organ, every single system in the body. So if you can become the God head of that universe that you're walking around in and plan that intention in a powerful way, frequency can be the fuel to help you achieve those goals in pretty much any situation that you can name. Awesome, man. Uh, <laughs> that was a really good answer. Um, I was taking some notes because you touched on a lot of really important points. And I think my favorite one is always well-rounded. Um, I'm always a little bit, you know, I think that there's powerful healing out there, but when it's like one way and this is the thing, um, this yeah. is very interactive because for me and what I've studied in self-healing, um, which is a considerable amount, maybe not as much, many, much as others, but enough. And it all comes back to me is that you have the capability to heal yourself. And sometimes we need this um, push from the universe and, you know, get this mystery illness and be like, why am I, why have I created this? Um, so, you know, you're using, you know, frequency and self, which is the most important thing. It comes from you. And then these are, these are tools, right? Yeah. It's like kind of going to the gym. It's like, okay, you're overweight. I use this example quite a bit. You're overweight, you know? What you got to do, you got to eat vegetables, you eat better, go to the gym. And the yeah. gym has the tools, but it's your intention, it's your motivation, it's your action, it's your interaction with those tools combined with your intention. Now you can get a result. And so we have these powerful tools. And I really like what you talked about is, uh, you know, disrupting the neural network, disrupting the pattern. And, and I was going to ask you a little bit about this. I'm sure you're familiar with cymatics. And it shows yeah. as you go through cymatics, if you guys haven't heard, is the visual representation of sound. And so if you Google cymatics, it's pretty cool. And you see the sand all distorted, but then you get to certain frequencies and it comes to a perfect geometric pattern. So what these are doing essentially in my mind is that, you know, in the, in the neural network of the mind, when you have a belief, when you have an illness, when you have a thing, you know, the, the mind is, is sending these signals to the body. 
And the bigger the neural network is, the the more powerful it is. And you got to disrupt that. It's a pattern interrupt in NLP. Um, so these these um, frequencies can help you interrupt that pattern to build new neural networks literally in your brain that create a different signal. And then what happens is neural pruning, where the old big bad thing of the thing that you don't want you can, it starts to dissipate through neural pruning, it goes away, and you start to consciously on purpose build the neural network you want of health, of vibrance, of success, or whatever, and now that, that's where I see yourself as the free will creator, that's where we get free will to choose through our own consciousness to have the Godhead, and um, you also touched on the heart, and I recently wrote another post on Instagram about the heart, and it has the largest electromagnetic field. It said the exact same thing. It sends more information to the head than the head does to the brain than the brain does to the heart. It has uh, four, over 40,000 neurons, which essentially makes it a brain. Um, and so it's extremely fascinating. What's happening on the planet, I think, is that the mind, because it's logic, is we're getting controlled by the mind. Um, when we should be led by the heart and the mind problem solves as we go forward because the mind has this, you know, or the heart has this mag magnificent intelligence that's connected to everything, but the mind can't see that far. It doesn't have that ability. It's kind of problem solving along the way. If we get a flat tire, the mind can go over and it can fix the flat tire, but the heart is like choosing the direction of where we're going. So um, you touched on a lot of uh, beautiful things. And um, I guess what I wanted to ask is, Either if you want to, I've, I've seen a few documentaries that I think are pretty powerful, cymatics, things like that. I don't know if you want to touch on any of that or binaural beats and, and how they're actually working um, through your study. Do you want to touch on that at all or do you want me to go somewhere else with it? No, sure. Um, so for me personally, binaural beats and, I, and honestly, pure tones, both of those, I really put in the same category. And what a pure tone is, is in, in my music that you were digging through, um, that is frequency that's embedded or frequency that is actually tuned on the instrument to be a frequency in the music and introduced with melody and beats. And so you have um, something that's creative and something that's fun and accessible to listen to. A pure tone um, would just be one of the solfagio, you know, 528 or one of those tones with no music, no, you know, pretty stuff to dress it up, just the pure tone. And it would be something that a lot of people have a hard time processing. It would just be a, you know, it would be something like when you go get a sound test done and they say, can you hear this beat? And, you know, it's, it's very similar. But what happens is, just as you were talking about the gym, I use the gym a lot because um, the gym is a place that is not always fun to go to, but you do it because you are looking for a specific outcome. And a lot of times food is the same way. People will say, well, when I changed to being vegan or being a vegetarian, I had such a hard time letting go of meat and this food doesn't taste good and they'll go through that. But after they'll hit that tipping point where they start seeing that their body feels better when they make that switch and when they work out in the gym, their body feels better, but it wasn't always a fun woo-woo process of like, oh, yay, this is fun, you know? And so that's what I think is a little different with our music that we're using is sometimes when I first started this, you know, um, company, when I started doing the music, I started introducing heavy shamanic drums, you know, with the music. I started introducing electronic drums and hip hop drums and different kind of music um, pairings that, you know, you don't traditionally see with sound healing. And I started also working on frequencies that really push, you know, some harder binaural beats, some, some um, larger bass sounds and, and, and a little bit louder of the higher, um, you know, frequencies that are not always um, nice to hear, you know, but because I started seeing with my personal exploration with it that I was having breakthroughs and exactly what you're talking about, that disruption process. And I was saying it, basically what I tell people is if a truck is driving down the road and it hits a pothole and all the stuff in the back of the pickup, you know, and you just took a snapshot picture of that and all the, you know, the shovels and everything else is up in the air. Now imagine your body with sound in the same way where the frequency hits it and it displaces this energetic attachments that we have, whether it's um, thought processes that are embedded from, you know, family members, you know, or a bad childhood or, or whether it's a, a traumatized uh, um, accident, you know, a car wreck or, you know, whatever it is, we have these traumas that are stored in our tissues, issues in our tissues, right? And we have the, um, basically these 
energetic attachments that are not always pretty and not always there. And lots of times people are not aware that they're there. And so when they go to a sound bath, they might start bawling their eyes out. They might start laughing their heads off. These releases are because this energy was trapped or stored and was, had nowhere to go. But the person was so involved in their mundane daily existence that they were not giving an awareness or an attention to the processes of letting this go. So this frequency brings up, it, it forces it out of the pickup truck. And then we take a snapshot and what the intention does and what the focus of a, a person who is trained or has experience with sound, they can help you to see as an observer, here's some things in your body that are not feeling good, that are coming up for you during this sound bath, during this treatment. And you need to be aware of this because you're the one that's moving it out. The sound's not moving it out. I'm not moving it out. You're moving it out. And so your awareness and your intention now, because the sound helped you to be aware that it's present with you, is what's going to move that out. And so I think that binaural beats for me on a personal level, what they helped me do was to break up that dyslexia and the I can't and I'm not like everyone else and all of those things that I was told or told myself growing up. I started realizing that it was all bullshit, you know, that I, <laughs> I could move forward and that I was the one in charge and that um, I could co create this process of learning through just being excited and having gratitude for man i've really learned how to spell better i've learned how to read better and retain the information i've learned and just giving myself that self-care and using those binaural beats i started feeling different when i would take the headphones off you know after a 15 minute 30 minute or an hour session with binaural beats i was able to you know read it, it within six months of using binaural beats i read i was reading about six books a week and retaining the information, connecting the dots, and I was having, you know, conversations with college professors and, you know, high school teachers and artists and musicians and just connecting the dots between the business world and, you know, the ap academic and the, you know, just everything from art history to sacred geometry. And people are like, dude, what happened to you? And it's just because the binaural beats broke through that wall of I can't and I'm not like everyone else. And so it allowed me to reprogram and to make the new network and to move forward into that. So I just feel like Pure Tones by Neural Beats are an amazing place to start your sound journey. And even though it might be boring, it's gonna be like going to the gym, you're going to start seeing real breakthroughs if you put the time into it. Awesome, man. That's all great. You know, what what a can't what a, what a made me think about was the right and left brain. You know, what we're trying to do, I think a lot of the binaural beats and some of the work is, is having both of them active and creating, uh, I can't remember who it was. Oh, right, and I'm still trying to get her on the show. Her name's uh, Barbara Hepburn, and she's a neuroscientist, and so is her husband. It's like a combo, mm -hmm. they're amazing. And she's like, all of my work is creating neural synapses between right and left brain, that's all I do through these different things, a physical sound, whatever the case is. And, and I, and so that's what we're trying to do here is create right and left. And what I really like that you're talking about is programming. And I've been recently speaking more about just the body being this supercomputer that's programmable when, because I've been putting a little bit more um, effort into getting my book out there. And that's essentially what it does. Like to teach as kids that through your own consciousness that you can program your body. And so through sport, it just gives it a catalyst. Like if you want to create a business, if you want to get better at music, if you want to go to the gym, if you want to change your self image, doesn't matter what you want to program your mind and body to do. You can do that, but it starts with that little bit of awareness and choice. Like, first of all, you got to realize you can do it. Yeah. Then you got to figure out what is it that you want? Do you want to be the best snowboarder on the planet? Do you want to be the best musician you can be? Do you want to explore the planet and figure out passive income? And so what you do is you have those declarative I am statements. You figure out the belief systems, right? Has anybody yeah. ever traveled the planet before and figured out how to make money yes how many thousands of people great what did they believe you know i believe that money comes to me in different ways blah 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 you start to code that into your consciousness and you're building the neural networks and essentially the vibration to make that happen because you are a creator um you know i've heard once that god is the ability to influence one's reality so in that sense we are all god 
we, right. we can, but it requires our free will consciousness to take the time to actually do those things. You got to go to the gym and, um, and you have to put in the work to make that happen. Um, yeah. So do you want to touch on that? Cause I have a question, but <laughs> yeah, no, um, I think that it's, it's so interesting. Like I'm, you know, by far not a perfect person, but I've seen tremendous change in myself as far as the, you know, disabilities or, you know, the different stereotype um, uh, that are put on a person that has dyslexia, you know, um, when I was younger, there wasn't a lot of allowances for like longer times taking tests or being presented in a different environment, you know, all these different things that are available today. And, and it's so awesome that there's help for students that learn different or, you know, feel things like you'll get into HSP, like highly sensitive person. And I, I believe that I am that one of those people, you know, a lot of the things when they're going down the list of what a HSP is, I'm like, yep, mm -hmm, that's me. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the same thing with like an indigo child, you know, they'll say that they're here to disrupt. I, had such a problem with authority. I could not, I could not stand to have someone have power over me or control. And then I asked a lot of questions, which adults didn't like, you know, like, well, why do we have to learn this? Or what are we going to use this for? Or, you know, why is it done this certain way when it could be done this way and be faster? And, you know, instead of communicating with me as a person, it was like I was talked down to. And so I started seeing that as a child, I was really rebellious and rebelling against the authority and rebelling against things that I would ask questions and they would just be like, because I said so, or, you know, it was just like, I wanted to challenge the system. And so I think that there's lots of people who have creative minds and what you're seeing that are HSPs or dyslexic. And you're seeing that now the corporate world is starting to address this you know there's a lot of business models that are starting to take into consideration what a creative person even though they don't meet our mold for this this and this here's you know 17 other areas that they could better our business make us more efficient and you know connect the dots in ways that other traditional employees could not and so i think like the biggest thing that has happened is that you're starting like you were talking about the left right brain you know one one of the first things i got introduced into um growing up with sound healing was hemisync from the monroe institute and i loved it you know it was one of the first things that i started seeing like wow this is really cool and um i think that's some of the biggest work that they're doing there besides astral projection and kind of outer body experiences is that connection of the left and right brain you know and they called it hemisync technology I believe and um, so you know it's just I think what we're seeing is that the new like um, the new uh, shift and that we're coming into is that even though scientific data is awesome to prove um, we're moving into an age of intuition you know and I think Alan Watts was who said science is great but science is always limited by its technology that it's using to prove its theories. And so he said, once you start connecting with the heart and intuition, you're open to a much you know, farther reaching level of awareness and of consciousness by connecting those together. And so I think if we can learn how those creative minds and the intuitive minds can connect with the scientific and you know, statistic-based information and connect those, the hemisync, you know, connect those together. I think we're on a path for a technological and, you know, just uh, explosion that's going to help not only consciousness, but the, I guess, compassion that we really need to um, change this planet. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a mother energy, <laughs> you know, it's that, it's that um, divine feminism, feminine, feminine, feminine energy that needs to kind of get plugged in where there's an intuition, creativity, and a nurturing, compassion energy that is going to start teaching people that, um, you know, maybe capitalism is not the way. <laughs> maybe it's not cutthroat and what by any means necessary to get ahead. Maybe it's you know, if I have success, you have success, and we help each other. And by 
um, being a ladder for one another, you know, the, the unity consciousness is going to be connected um, to where we're going to see bigger surges of how much creativity, intuition, and that compassion being linked together could create a network that is just healing not only of humanity, but of the planet and all the damage that we've done to it. Yeah, man, you said you said so many great things there. I believe I I'm on board with all of it. Um, okay, so well, the first thing I like to touch on is just being like stuffed into the mold because that was my upbringing as well. Um, you know, I was more creative, open-minded, and you know, through my personal research of school, it is basically, um, you know, it's probably getting a little bit better, but it is really designed to focus more on the left brain. You know, intelligence is just a memory recall of crap that you don't even really want to think about. And they're not teaching right brain. It's, you know, if you, you can control the left brain, you know, through hypnosis, through these different things, through programming, you can do that. Um, so that's kind of how I saw school and, and see it through the study. And then there's a lot coming out that we need to refocus on this right side development as well creating the idea you know moving into that creative space and that's also the intuitive space of who you are but really what they're doing is stuffing you into the mold and then they they throw out a word which is just a sound vibration and they label it and it's supposed to mean all these different things and the kids might not even have that attachment to what that is it's just he's literally experiencing it. like you know we're all so incredibly unique and it's just we try to label 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 rather than just let something experience fully um, you know, the entire thing of what it is and encourage the strengths and encourage um, all the beautiful things that they are. And then you touched on, um, you know, combining them that well, I added combining masculine and feminine, we're living in a society right now, it's very uh, masculine dominant base, it's competition, it's win or lose, it's it's and that's what men, you know, go back in the day, it's me, I got to beat this other caveman, or I got to beat this saber tooth tiger, or it's an all or nothing type of thing. And we're taking that model into yeah. the world, right? Even into our education system, right? There's only one winner, one valedictorian, one champion, one thing. And, and if you lose, then you know, then you're your second best, you're no good. And so if we can combine this like feminine aspect to it, if we can combine, um, you know, this more nurturing, more open minded, more collaborative, more supportive energy throughout the entire world, uh, that is going to be um, a lot more, I think, beneficial and, and a better experience, a better human experience, you know, to have a little bit of a supportive environment. So what I wanted to touch on, because I think that you wrapped that up really nicely and I don't really need to say any more than, than I just did. Um, can you tell me, um, you know, in a way, if, if there's a parent out there or there's a person, how can we start to use these sounds and frequencies to explore? Do we need to go somewhere and get the sounds? Can we, can we educate ourselves enough to kind of play around and, and understand it? And in what way? Because I know you did, you did some work with kids and I'm really passionate about, you know, helping the youth, helping kids um, you know, create and define their reality. And one really important thing for me is just learning to code your belief systems. And yeah. so if we can learn to understand what our limiting beliefs are uh, to uh, figure out what the belief system we need is. So like for school, for example, like, okay, you know, I learn things easily, you know, this um, knowledge you know, I learn all things all the time. I'm always learning. I'm a quick learner. Um, any challenge I can overcome, just stuff like that. We can divine, define our um, beliefs and then code them through sound, through frequency, through intention, through all these different means. So maybe you can speak on how uh, an adult would use this and how they would introduce this to, to their kids to be, be um, getting all the benefits. Okay. Yeah. So um, for me, my first exploration was really pure tones and the binaural beats and I think it's neat to start there because it, it your focus is on the pure tone or the actual frequency itself and you have headphones on so people who have a hard time meditating people who have a hard time turning off the, the noise in their brain like for me I was had a horrible time trying to meditate when I before I introduced sound into my self-care process with that I would sit and I would say I have to pay this bill I've got a this appointment I've, you know I, my brain would just run and run and run and that's the way my brain is it's you know all over the place and it's got this big works table and so what I found was with those pure tones and binaural beats um, it shut all that off I was able to just 
create that Zen space because it quieted my mind. And I think that, so for anyone that's having issues with sleeping or having issues with meditating, you know, as an adult, these are great places to start. And they're not the funnest, you know, the fun stuff, but it, it definitely is something that is a really great place to start because it gives you like the fundamentals. You know, you're focusing on that frequency. You've got an intention based on, you know, almost every website has the intentions based with the frequency that they're showing you. <clears throat> so you set those intentions and you sit down with the frequency and it's going to take a little bit. It's just like the gym. You're not going to go on the treadmill for five minutes and have the body that you want, you know, or the stamina that you want. So it's the same thing. I tell people that you should spend at least 10 minutes with the frequency in the beginning and that if you can do it about three to four times a week, and then as you start seeing the benefits of that, you start increasing your time spent with it. And that can have monumental effects. Within a week and a half, two weeks, you, um, you should start seeing changes um, in your thought process, the quieting of the mind, the finding a peaceful relaxation. And, and when you really get down to the root of it, that's what we all need, no matter who we are, is, you know, in our society today, it's hustle bustle and, you know, just getting into the stagnant mundane energy of, you know, the same process over and over. And so um, that's what this, cre you know, by creating that zen and that, and that stress relief, you're getting rid of some of the most um, powerful uh, effects that disease, you know, almost all disease, the root is, you know, stress. Because when the body's stressed, it starts moving processes from the immune system, from digestion, from whatever. Because when you're keeping that high stress level, it's pulling from other systems to maintain that high stress level, the cortisol and all of the different things that go into that process. And so, um, uh, long story short, binaural beats and pure tones are a great place to start. Um, they can quiet the mind and great for meditation. Um, and then, as far as kids, I think what I saw was I've worked with kids that have had dyslexia, I've worked with kids with autism, um, and, you know, kids that were just underserved, you know, that had, um, you know, uh, tough lives, you know, up to the point to when we started working with them. And so I've seen how music being introduced in subtle ways is like the perfect way to do it by um, when I started working with um, a, a young girl that had autism, she, there was no call response, you know, people would say her name and she would never look them. She had a really hard time looking people in the eye or on um, communication on any level and had a really hard time, um, was not in public school when we started working with her. And I just started using my phone, you know, just very subtle. In the first few meetings with her, we just started playing frequency on the phone, just having it in the background. And about the third meeting in the middle of our talk, she started humming the frequency because she started picking up on it and started humming it, you know, just rocking and humming and listening to the music. And then we introduced it onto a stereo and then we started using singing bowls and we started focusing, bringing more of a focus into the frequency and started um, having her, you know, play the sound bowl and start taking a hands-on approach. So it's like a step-by-step -step process, you know, whether there's a disability involved or um, uh, you know, any kind of stimulation that's needed from um, pretty much any age range. I think subtlety is the best way to introduce it step by step into that. And that can happen while you're cooking dinner, playing music in the background. That can happen while reading a book, playing music softly in the background. So it can be introduced in, in a lot of different ways. But I think that Teaching kids, um, there's a girl in Australia that's doing this right now, Tamille Bentley, and she's actually one of our affiliates, you know, that has worked with our sound, um, and she's awesome, you know, I think Bruce Lipton wrote the forward to her book, but she has this thing called emotional literacy, um, where she's teaching kids about awareness and meditation, you know, seven, six, seven, eight years old, teaching them about energy balls and creating energy and mindsets and awareness and meditation. And I think that this is the new format for school, you know? Um, I think the guy from Mind Valley just put out a video the other day where he was saying that the first day in monk school, there was a 10 year old teacher that said, um, you know, he's teaching five year olds and Jay asked him, uh, 
you know, what did they learn their first day? And they said, well, what we're taught is that from life until death, the only thing that stays with us constant is our breath. So we learn how to breathe. And I just thought, whoa, <laughs> that's like such a powerful statement, you know? And so I think that if kids are taught how to breathe, then they are taught about their self-awareness and their body image and the way that they interact with the world. And if we would have been taught that from an early age, we would have had tools to handle pretty much any situation. And I think what you were talking about with the creative brain, I think creative um, activities create creative, creative thinking. And in creative thinking, we learn how to handle situations that come at us. And I think that's very similar to this self-awareness that's being taught to a lot of the young children now in these really great programs, is that if we have that self-awareness and that consciousness of knowing that there's more than just the mortgage payment and the, you know, the IRS and the society, you know, staple points, <laughs> you know, but life is far bigger than that. And that we're taught how to breathe. Um, I think it changes lives and I think that's, you know, that the parent and the child, um, we're starting to learn now that the children actually know more than we do and we just have to listen instead of trying to boss them around all the time. <laughs> oh, amazing, man. I, I, I love all that and I, I certainly agree I, and I like the uh, little teaching point of the, the breath is, is always with us and I think that what, what we've lost in our education is the fundamentals of that. You know, we, we've lost really core spiritual teachings. You call them spiritual teachings or just existence teachings like you, you are essentially this body in an environment. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff outside you, but, you know, there's certain things within the body you can control. And I was l lucky and fortunate enough to learn that through martial arts. And I remember going through school and it was like, everyone was trying to convince me of what I knew, uh, like opposite yeah. of what I knew. It was like, no, nah, no, nah, I control, you know, I can influence my healing. You know, I can influence all of my reality because, you know, that's what I learned in martial arts. And, and of course you can. So can you. Why do you think you can't? And so we're kind of conditioned to look outside of ourselves for these answers, for these healings, for these gurus, for these anything outside of us, you know, and we got to learn to look within. And so I guess I wanted to go to the realm of possibility because there was something that you touched on earlier about the kids and, and what they're capable of. And I'm out here in Maine studying with uh, the native elder of the Mi'kmaq Nation, David Lombert Senapas, and I got him on the Leak Project yesterday. And the Leak Project is a huge, you know, um, YouTube channel and they go everything from like conspiracy, paranormal, aliens, all that kind of stuff. And uh, David was taught the star yeah. teachings by the natives and uh, well, his native native elders. So it's a completely different upbringing, completely different schooling system. He spent the first 26 years of his life on a mountain. Like it's nothing like what we're, um, we're um, used to. And so one of the questions he was talking about possibility and, and David's like, well, you know, a lot of the bump in the night is the kids because when they're there, they have so much less distortion and belief and programming to go through. And so when they're sleeping, they're even more connected with source or spirit or this possibility. And they're moving things with their mind in the night. And there's, he said, there's even slits in time. And he's just like one of, you know, he's just like, I, he tells a story about one of his teachers, you know, going to the, to an open field and then, you know, going back to back and then turning around and this person disappeared. And he talked about the story and he's just like, you know, at first it was like the most unbelievable thing you could ever imagine. He's just like, but if anybody did that now, what if it was just something simple? What if it was just a bit of a technology? What if it was just a simple understanding that you can't wrap your mind around right now? And it wasn't as like breakthrough and, and crazy as you imagine. And the way that I think about that is, is when we're born, everybody's trying to sell us our limitations, Right rather than yeah. sell us our potential abilities. I, I think that the body, the human body is the intelligence and our consciousness is kind of the driver and our consciousness thinks that we're driving like a 1920, um, you know, Ford Model <laughs> T when really we're in like an F1 spaceship. And it's like, no, this thing can actually take off. You know what I mean? This thing can fly. And because we're looking at this, um, reality from two different lenses. Like this is what's possible. This is what's possible. Just like the four minute mile, just like some people say, you know, you can heal your body. Some people say you can't. Well, the one that says they can heal their body is going to have an extraordinarily more, um, you know, a possibility of achieving that result than the person who doesn't think that. 
you know? And so I think that right. we should be selling our kids the possibility. Um, and even the, some of the studies on like, you know, intuition and, and all these incredible things coming up, but you know, it's going to take science a while to measure it. You know, if you read the autobiography of a yogi, it's, you know, it's a kid's story wanting to become a yogi and it's all normal stuff. You know, I want to be a yogi. I'm going around, I'm doing these things. This all sucks. Then a crazy experience that you can't even wrap your mind around and going through normal life, struggling through university. You know what I mean? How am I going to do this? A little trust in spirit. Then boom, something that's just extraordinary. And then over his lifetime, he was kind of touching that, that exponential realm that, um, you know, somebody made a comment about uh, the morphogenic field, and this is where it kind of come up is uh, Demetrius Vela. I hope I didn't butcher your name, but I, I just saw that comment. So I'm just curious, you know, yes. with sound, frequency, vibration, possibility, brain entrainment, you know, what do you believe on like the big scope of like, you know, what we're connecting to, what's possible with frequency and vibration and uh, where we could potentially go, you know, if we, tra and I've always thought about this in the way of like training kids like Shaolin monks, using all the technology, all the positive, you know, affirmations, you can do anything, you can heal your body, you know, you can, you know, move objects or whatever the case is just like that. We don't know what the pot, we don't know, you know, if this fighter jet can take off, we don't know if it can fly a million feet, you know? So I'm just curious on, on that kind of rant that I've just given you. Yeah, no, I think it's awesome. So I, <laughs> the way I dress is very different. Most of the time when people hear my music, they're like, you created that shamanic music, you know, like, cause I just, <clears throat> I don't look the part, but I think growing up, I dressed, uh, you know, crazy and had crazy hair and did all that. And I think I just got it out of my system. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is to say that I think what I had to do before I started getting into the potential was the breakdown. And I think that's what people do is like when you see people emerge from these cocoons, whether it's trauma, you know, or, you know, some type of loss that happens, it makes people reassess their life. And then they start judging themselves. I mean, we're all guilty of it. We start looking at well, look at all my friends in high school. This is what they're doing. And this is how much money they're making. And this is how successful they are. And, and so there comes a point where that dark night or that trauma or whatever it is that just meets you head on, you go into this cocoon and when you emerge, you're this new person and you're still kind of pulling your feet out of that. And you're asking yourself questions like, um, as a sound healer and this other sound healer wants to work together, is he going to steal my thunder? Is this artist, you know, it, he's a better painter than me, but he wants me to do a show with him. And maybe, you know, I'm not good enough to be there. Or, you know, you start asking yourself all these questions when you're emerging into this new life. And I think the coolest thing that I've seen was this quote that said, you are the only you, and that is your true power. And, I, and that statement stopped me in my tracks where I realized, like, nobody has the voice that I do. You know, like when I sing, it's very unique and different. And when I write my music, I'm using different instrumentation and the combinations I'm using, the way I mix my music, all these different things, all these facets. And it's the same thing with everyone else. Your product and the, the way you present it, you know, when you start looking at Bruce Lipton and Joe Dispenza, are they really, or Greg Braden for that fact, matter of fact, you know, are any of these guys really saying anything that different? They're all pretty similar, but why do different people resonate with each one of them? Because of the way they look, their flow, their vocabulary, you know? Um, and so I think that when you get out of that lack, you know, that, cause that's where all that comes from, that competition and all of those things um, comes from, feeling like you're going to lose something. So by surrendering to, I am the only me and nobody can do it like me, then there's, you don't feel this lack mentality. You don't feel like someone's going to take something from you. So you're more willing to like move into that new life and move into that um, authentic state of, you know, approaching people with an open heart and approaching people with a, um, an open mindset to where there's more possibilities and there's less limitations and there's more possibilities. And so you meet into a, a space when you can create a tribe of people that are meeting in possibility and not meeting in the limitation, that's where you're going to thrive. And I think, you know, Steve Jobs, or no, no, uh, Gary V. <laughs> Gary V said, if you have that friend that is negative, get them out, get them out. It doesn't matter how good of a friend they are, they're going to hold you back and limit you. And it's going, you know, he said, get people that are striving above what you're doing that you have to keep up with and people that inspire you and people that speak possibilities, not limitations. And I think that 
that's what it's exactly what you said it's just that has to be the focus but i think to do that you have to destroy that old self and and even you know when i made this new shift into this new life i have no friends left from my old life and it's not that i didn't want to keep them it's just that the vibration wasn't there the collaboration the 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 resonance was not there to sustain those friendships and i had to move on and you know, it's just part of the process. It's growth, it's change. And, you know, that's where you're going to find the miracles is by meeting that authentic self that wants to truly become the new you. That's beautiful, man. I agree with, I so agree with all that. And I really just love the, uh, you know, hang around with people who are speaking possibility and not limitation. And I really feel like even, you know, to kind of double down on that idea is the people speaking limitation are really selling limitation. You know, it's like they, you got to convince yourself of that. And the people who speak possibility are encouraging possibility and the unknown because we don't know, you know, every year with what's going on in the plan, we have no idea what we're capable of. And even if you get a little step farther, that's a new possibility. That's a new frontier for you. And that's really what matters. Um, so I think all of that was really, really beautiful and well put. And the last thing I'll just mention, yeah, yeah go ahead. Of course. Uh -huh. I was just going to say, one of, the, one of the things that I think is really important for people to realize is that if you, I worked in a nonprofit for 10 years and I saw, you know, creative people, artists, musicians, poets, and then I started working in sound and healing. And when I did that, I started seeing this cross uh, pattern that a lot of my friends weren't seeing. I saw behind the curtains of the yoga studios and the holistic centers and, um, you, you know, just holistic practitioners were a bunch of my friends and I started seeing behind the curtain and I started saying to myself, the artist who's struggling to sell the paintings and the musicians who are struggling to connect people with their music and their work are the same as the energy worker that's trying to get people into her practice and the holistic sensor that's trying to connect community. All of these people have these gifts and they have the gift of working with people because that's what all of that is. That vibration of art and music and poetry is really just a tool to connect you to people. And so um, when you start seeing that connection where there's this divine um, channeling of information you know whether you're a painter a musician poet or an energy worker um you're using that talent and that channeling to work with people and you need to get people to support you and you have to um lots of people will say well you know if that's divinely given to you why can you charge for it and i always tell people it's i'm really glad you asked that question <laughs> Because I'm doing this full time and to do a good job at my craft and what I'm doing working with people, I have to always study, I have to always learn, I have to always explore and apply and experience. And so in doing that, you're paying the person for their time for everything that they've put into that, not only the learning process, but bringing it to you and, and facilitating it in a professional manner in a professional environment you're paying for all these things just like when you go to starbucks you're not going to negotiate with them about a price of coffee right you know you're just going to be like okay that's the price and it's the same thing with artists and musicians they're going through this time where the world and society is saying give it away for free give it away for free give it away for free and i think that there needs to be an education a new emergence of education in this field of why you support your artists and the creative minds and why you support the people who are helping you with your self-care and how important that process is both of those you know being creative um, and being intuitive and uh, compassionate these are the new tools for the healing like we talked about so in that connection where i saw that and trying to get more of those types of people to work together i started asking myself the question how <laughs> how can I um, help people who are not sound healers and musicians apply this? And that's where that affiliate program comes in that I'm, that I'm working with is I started asking myself, like when I would play in a sound bath, like a didgeridoo or um, a yu chen is an instrument I play, it's a Chinese instrument, and people would open their eyes in meditation and they would look at, like, what is he playing? Like, what is that? You know? And I didn't like that. I wanted people to stay in into that inner, you know, dialogue and that process of that journey. And so we started introducing surround sound speakers and doing, you know, pre-recorded music, but we started putting more emphasis 
on, I mean, we did some live instrumentation, singing bowls and different things like that, but we mic'd them and we made it a surround sound experience where the floor would vibrate, the body would vibrate, people would feel it. And there was definite movement of energy every single time. And I call it subtly epic, where when you go see an acoustic guitar player, they play and you're like, oh, that was really good. But if you don't buy that CD and take it home with you, the way life is so hustle bustle, you're not gonna really keep that vibration or feel into that. So it's great and it's nice for that time. But if you go to Bonnaroo or Burning Man or any of these larger experiences where it's a full murder, like you're just dipping down into that spirit energy and you're there for a week or two weeks or whatever it is, and you're surrounded by music, you know, people come back from that and they're like, dude, I went to Burning Man. It was amazing, right? <laughs> and so it was just like this energy that you feel in them for weeks after they come back. And and I wanted to create sound events that were like that, like subtly epic, something that stayed with you more than just a day, more than just a few hours, but something that really embedded. And to do that, you have to work with intention of the individual. You have to work with connecting group energy. You have to work with creating a space that is subtly epic and then introducing music that matches that, that um, vibration that, you know, that, that you're searching for. So, we started doing that and then we started teaching people that are not sound healers and not musicians how to facilitate these events because I started asking myself the question, if a person is running a holistic center or a yoga studio or an art gallery, they already know how to interact with people. They know how to set an intention. They know how to promote an event. They know how to create an environment that, you know, for whatever style event they're doing. So why not give them the tools and teach them how to facilitate sound events? Teach, you know, how hard is it to do a singing bowl? You know what I'm saying? So like teach people. And so this comes back to what you were saying about exploring. How do we explore? And I think that you go to sound baths. I think that you listen to pure tones and binaural beats. I think you start getting involved with buying a singing bowl. It's, you know, it's really, it's not, they're not that expensive. It's really easy to, anyone can learn it. You start vocal toning. And, um, you know, going to events where people are already facilitating and have knowledge and asking questions and connecting with community that way. And I think that I just wanted to get that in real quick is to say that I think it's so easy to do. It's relatively inexpensive and that there's such a power source and a deep rabbit hole that you can go down that can truly change your life, you know. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's a, I'm glad you jumped in. As it's great. It's, it reminds me of one of my own rants when I'm getting interviewed. <laughs> I just like, boom, just blast off. Uh, no, I, 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 I totally agree. And I think that what you're speaking of really is setting up a container. You know, if like you go to, um, I don't know, a KKK rally back in the whatever the heck, hopefully they're mostly gone now, but back in the day, that's a certain container. There's a certain group of people talking about a certain thing in a certain way. It's a tense. It's, it's a container. But what we want to create is a, is a container that is as uh, mutually supportive, beneficial, um, collaborative, exponential, um, you know, in a, in a state of possibility using some technology. So it's like, hey, when you go to this sound bath or whatever, like this is a very personal experience. This is like our container. So when, when you know, what I was taught in martial arts is a, is a container as well. You know, you go to a certain room, um, you know, there's respect for the teacher, there's respect for other students, and there's respect for yourself. Um, so we have the power to set up that container with community. And I think that that's the most important thing. And now we're using sound and technology and vibration. Well, if you look at any indigenous culture or things like that, they're always using sound, music and dance. And we've lost that as a culture. And this is a way to get to know your neighbors. This is a way to get to know your community. And this is working with vibratory sound. It's so primal. Um, and so, you know, I think it's a, it's a really beautiful thing. And if they have those studios and those spaces set up, I, I love going to sound healings, um, gongs, meditation, singing bowls, you know, if it's near me, Burning Man, like you talked about, you know, I'll look at the book and, and look at all these different sounds. And this one year, they were going to get all the the art cars, not all the art cars, but some of the biggest ones. And they were going to do this group sound experience. And unfortunately, Burning Man, the gods of Burning Man dust us, dusted us in. But I was just imagining like these six art cars, you know, dusting beats and sound bowl and vibration. And I've been to those spaces and I've experienced it and it's amazing. And then so to be able to take that energy home and what that does for you when you, when you 
put the sound back in, um, you're creating a trigger. And I teach that. It's like, how do we get into that response really quickly? You're using an external stimulus to create an internal response and remind you of these certain empowering ideas or beliefs. And that's what we're doing. And we're using technology yeah. to do it. And we're doing it in a fun way. So I, I totally understand what you're doing with that and how powerful it is. And I think it's super important. Jump in because I can see you're excited about it. Yeah, I'm excited because you brought up the, the tribe and, and digital. And I wanted to say this. when I So right now, for the last three years, I've been making a new album every single month, which is a process, you know. Um, the guy, I think his name is NAS, the guy that travels around all the countries and does the minute video every single day. Have you seen him? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, and yeah. Anyways, and he's like uh, jumping or something. And now people, I think I, yeah, I think yeah. I've seen that guy. Yeah. People behind him. Yeah, yeah. So that guy, he made a video about saying how hard it was to do that minute and that he almost gave up several times and that, you know, he was doing a minute every single day. And he said it took him 12 hours to edit down to a minute. And, you know, and people were saying, were you putting it on YouTube and there's no subscribers? And he was saying that he just kept pushing and pushing. And one day, one of his videos went viral and it just changed his life. And from then on, you know, he's getting four or five, 10 million views on his videos now. And he's traveling the world and doing what he loves. And he said, this video is about me, but ultimately it's about you. And he was saying how to not give up and keep making, you know, keep doing what you're doing because it's going to connect, but you have to believe and hold that intention and just keep pounding it out, you know? And so several times in the process over the last three years, there's been times where I'm like, is anyone listening to this stuff? Like, is this connecting with people? You know, is this, is this really working? And then you'll get these testimonials from people that said they overcame cancer by going to the you know, groups 10, 12 times and connecting with using the music at home. And, you know, they use it as part of their healing and you'll see, you, you know, stuff that just has you crying, like, like, wow, this is really connecting with people. But I, there's moments when it's so tough to keep doing that. And when I first started doing this, some of the biggest resistance I got was the first two tracks of every month, you know, I'm using the astrological energy. So I'm basing the CD on the, the astrological energy and then setting frequencies to help counteract and to balance the month, you know? And so I'm using some, the first two tracks on each album are upbeat and mid tempo. And when I first started doing the groups, people would say, this isn't meditation music. What is this? Why, why did you put this on here? You know? And, and so I just said, have you guys ever got into ceremony, sacred space, setting up, you know, like looking at indigenous or tribal, you know, ceremonies where they use drums as a way to shake off evil spirits and bad energy. And I said, think about the modern group when we get together and these sound healings. Let's say we have 30 people. How many people are going through divorce? How many people are going through money problems or just lost their job or somebody just passed away? And I said, we're bringing in all this energy and it's heavy and it's dense and we all have traumas and struggles that we're going through. So I use these first two tracks using drums and different beats per minute and I'm doing hypnosis with music. So what I do is I might start at 100 beats per minute. And the next one goes down to 90 and the next one goes down to 85. And then by the time we end, we're on 65 beats per minute when everyone's asleep. So I'm dropping people in and I'm using rhythm. I'm using drums to disrupt and to break apart some of that really heavy, dense energy that people are bringing in so that we can get into a space where we're all on the same page and that we all are ready to receive that frequency. And we have a quiet mind and a different, you know, more theta pattern where we're just kind of really relaxed and just really ready to take in and have that programmed intention. So I just got excited when you brought that up because so many people had a hard time and it was such a resistance, but I just really knew that I had to stick with it, that, that I, I knew in my heart and in my gut that that was what I really wanted to do with music, to break it up and be non-traditional in that way. And I really knew it was going to be a big breakthrough. And now, you know, fast forward to three years later, there's more, every time we put out a CD, we're getting emails from affiliates, hey, can we get more upbeat tracks? And I'm like, but these are meditation groups. <laughs> you know? So it's, people are, wanted to, are actually wanting more shamanic drumming and they're wanting more electronic drums and, you know, they're wanting dance and people are starting to break in these circles and break it, starting to use the music and break into a static dance circles and using the music in different ways. So. That's one of the really um, exciting things that I feel like listening to Smile is doing is utilizing frequency every day. It's not just in the meditation or when you go to a sound healing, but 
cleaning your kitchen, working out, going for a walk. I mean, we're offering tracks that are kind of um, breaking the mold as to what sound healing is. And I'm excited about that. That's amazing, man. I love all that. You know, you, again, you touched on a lot of really important points. Um, I totally understand how you're using a sound as hypnosis because uh, you're, you got to meet people where they are, you know, and then you're, you're bringing them down and you're, you're working up this energy and it might be a little bit different than what people are used to. And some people are like, ah, a lot of people are like, I can't meditate. I can't just go there with all these stresses. I just lost my job and drop down into, you know, oneness mind, you know, crazy, but I'll give it a try. And then they don't. So it's a, uh, um, I totally understand that. And I love the thing about not giving up because, you know, doing the podcast for like three years, you know, it's just like the same thing. It's just like this battle, but I, for me, I just loved it. And I think that what, what you got to do is give yourself a worthy goal. You know, I think it's still the most I've made on the podcast in a month is 300 bucks. And that, that came like in year three. You know, it's like, so yeah. I'm like, okay, I got to figure it like it was resistance for me to even do Patreon. You know what I mean? But I was like, and I was like, oh, like, why can't I ask for money? And I was like, well, I'm working on this all day, every day, 40 to 60 hours a week, getting guests, editing podcasts, putting out content. I was like, why, why can't you ask? But it, there's also, I think too, with, with the journey, it's like, you know, supporting those authentic artists, those authentic musicians, those authentic podcasters that are doing it for the service, you know what I mean? And you got to earn it over time, you know what I mean? It's like your own thing where um, that guy who's doing the videos, you know, he he went through his own process of like wanting to give up and, and you know, it wasn't about him, right? It was about someone else. And when you make it about someone else, you're not going to give up, you know? When, when you hit, if you're doing it for you and just for selfish survival purposes and I need to go get some money and see who I can get some money from, um, you're going to stop at the first roadblock, maybe the second, maybe the third. But when you're doing it for other people from your heart because it's who you are, you are not stopping for anything, no matter if it's a thousand foot wall. You know, you'll just stare at that thing for a bit and figure out, oh, look, I invented these things and I can go up the wall now. It took me six months, but you know what? I did invent this thing to get over this wall because this is where I'm going. This is the direction that I've chosen and there's no stopping it. Um, so I think that's a really extraordinary point too, because, you know, when I first start working with people, I say, you got to give yourself a, a purpose that, you know, a mission and, and something you want to work on that you wouldn't change if you got a million dollars a day that you want to work over 10, 20 years. It's who you are. And you, you might not know exactly what it is at first. You might not know exactly, but you'll know a direction, right? Right now, you don't know if it's north, east, south, or west, right? At least if you get to north, then that's good. Then you can get to northeast, and then you can get to like, you know, 342.12. And, um, you know, I invite people always to go check out the Heart Journey creation on, um, or the Heart Journey experience on my SoundCloud because it hypnotizes you into your heart to ask you, you know, what your dream, what your passion, what your purpose, what your mission is, because your heart is that, that, that network that's created, uh, that's connected to spirit. And with removing the conscious mind that needs to keep you alive, now you can get to real answers. You know what I mean? Oh, well, you know, I love music and I want to be around good friends. And oh, this isn't as important as I thought it was. You really feel it. It resonates. So even if you're doing the thing that you want to do once a week, but you didn't do it in years, you're like, oh, I used to love art and do it all the time and haven't done it in four years. Okay, I just do it once a week. That's moving the energy and motion. You're starting to change the rudder in your ship. Right. And it requires action, but you're going to be able to experience that idea in a resonance, in a compelling feeling in the body to give you enough will and understanding to start making actual change. And, and um, so I think that's super important for people to do. Um, but I wanted to ask, you know, before, before we close this up, because it's been really cool. And I think that you've, you've shared a lot of great wisdom. Um, is there anything that I, you wish that I had asked or that you want to talk about before um, we go and you can feel free to sp speak as long as you wish. <laughs> um, no, but what, one thing that I, I think we covered a lot of really awesome stuff, but one thing I would love to do is um, I'd like to give away five. Um, I have an album called A Shamanic Journey for the Modern World and it's 12 tracks. It's, you know, one of my favorite albums. It's got, you know, it's a compilation of tracks made over the last three years. So it's, you know, a lot of different um, instrumentation, but a lot of shamanic drumming and just sound journey tracks. And I'd love to give away five copies. And what, what I would do is the first five people that, you know, write me an email at ian at listening to smile .com 
um, you know, with, you know, saying they saw this, you know, your podcast or the video um, on YouTube or Facebook, you know, I'll give away five copies for free from people who just send me an email saying that they want a copy and that they saw the interview. Um, I'd love to gift them a, a free copy of that album. Awesome. Appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Does, does yeah. it count? Does it count if I do it? Nah, no, I've already actually listened to a few. <laughs> um, no, and they were, they were really extraordinary tracks. Like people send me a lot of music and I don't have the time, but you know, I really liked the way that you did it. And I listened to the, with the big headphones. So now some of the work that I do, um, I would listen to binaural beats and different things, but now I actually weave in some of your tracks. So great job, cool. man. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Man. Thanks. Um, so brother, it's been, it's been really good. You, you know, I appreciate your work and what you're doing and you spoke about one thing, you know, the dedication, you know, how long it takes, you're doing it all day, every day. And that's what it takes. You're not on the fence. You're not straddling the line. You're doing it exactly the thing that you feel called to do. And that's the dedication it takes. And it does take uncertainty. You know, it does take failure. Yeah. Failure is a part of it. You embrace it. Love it. You say, yes, I'm moving in the direction that I want to do. You're learning. Failure is good. Yeah. Um, you know, so you're not giving up it's the same thing with the podcast. It's just like, you know, this is what I'm doing for as long as I feel like it. And if I don't feel like it, I won't do it. I'm not doing it to get $10, a million dollars, although that would be dope. And I would like that. I'll take it. <laughs> um, but I'm going to do it as long as I love it and I'm committed, you know, and so you're committed to the music, to the creation, to the service, to getting feedback from people and then giving them, Oh, that's really good. And now I can even make it better. So, you know, I appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, and so where can people find you, learn more about you if they want to check out some of the tracks and get involved? Yeah. So listening to smile.com is the website. And on the website, we have actual, there's a wellness series at the top. It says get music. You can go to the wellness series and there's free by, um, pure tones that they can download the Solfagio scale, the original Solfagio six frequencies. And then it has the the nine total and we have some different combinations of them they're all free you can download them for free they're pure tones and the shamanic journey cd is on there so they can take a listen to it and if they like it first five that send it uh send me an email i'll give them a free copy of it and um there's lots of information on the website i have information about um sacred frequency binaural beats sound healing freak what is frequency minded music what is a sonic meditation there's a lot of questions that get answered and there's even a section that says where to start um very it's a, just an educational layout where i think it helps walk people through um so there's a lot of information on there amazing Ian, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for your work, um, spreading the good vibes, the good sounds, and literally spreading the good vibrations. It's a terrible joke, but I, <laughs> it just it came to me as I was talking. But uh, I appreciate you and what you're up to. We'll definitely stay in touch, and uh, just thank you for everything you're doing. Thanks so much for having me, man. I had a great time. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Catch you in the next one. Have an amazing day.